I'm really, really happy to pass over to Ilza Jacobson, who is going to talk to us uh, now about the misrepresentation of scientific facts and promotion of gender ideology in Germany. So to be honest, I never imagined I would speak at a webinar directed at feminist, um, but it's a great pleasure to be here. And I'm um, very, very grateful for having this opportunity. Um, I then decided to go into research in my PhD in microbiology, and I'm currently teaching in that field. I was first introduced um, when I was 18 by my philosophy teacher, who after class gave me Sexual Politics by Kate Millett to feminism. So I started right out with radical feminism and then, of course, read the usual books, but I never really got into activism. The only thing up to um, actually a few months ago I really did was as a group leader in science, trying to promote women in science on a day-to-day -day basis by networking, making sure that when we organize conferences, we have a sufficient number of female speakers, um, supporting women who are pregnant during their PhD, et cetera, et cetera. So, and that was basically all I was doing up to very recently. I came about the gender ideology concept um, in the context of discussions around Vogue um, ideas on YouTube, while I was actually looking for documentaries on feminism. I was thinking this would be nice to watch while I was redoing my bathroom. Um, and that made me aware of the topic. So as a consequence, I signed the declaration in 21. Um, the year in which in May, the proposal of self ID legislation was rejected in the German parliament. So I thought, you know, that there is an issue in several countries, but probably not in Germany. And I kind of sit back and watched. And then in September 21, the Lancet cover happened, um, which you're probably all aware of. Now, that Lancet cover made me incredibly angry for two reasons. One reason, the obvious one, is that I think referring to women's bodies with vaginas is dehumanizing us. Um, it's one of the worst things I've ever heard and never expected to hear this phrase from the medical establishment. The other point was that as a veterinarian, I immediately realized that this idea of referring to women in the context of menstruation as bodies with vaginas is scientific nonsense because most female mammals do not bleed at all. And those who do often do not bleed because they menstruate, but like dogs, this beautiful example here, do bleed during pre-estrus and estrus, so during the fertile days, which is the opposite to what happens in women. As I got a little bit more active online to find out more and started a dedicated Twitter account to first follow the UK red femme scene and then made contact with German ones. And what you frequently encounter there is in arguments that somebody more or less says, you know, biology has advanced and biological sex is not binary. And if you insist it is, you're a bigot. So one question was, where did they got those ideas from? And in the English um, area, certainly an article in Scientific American 2017 had a big influence. And this is science journalism. It's not science per se. And, and it's hard work to always point out how this graph, for example, misrepresents the actual facts. Now, why at Twitter, I then made contact with um, a group of people who often publish or post under the hashtag Teamology. And one of those, uh, Marika Humpel, contacted me in March this year because she had the idea to go through different pieces on public broadcasting to tackle misrepresentation of scientific facts and to maybe find five examples and then to write about it, include an open letter and have at least 40 biologists to sign them. So I got involved with that at that stage. Now, a few words about public broadcasting. It was established in Germany after the Second World War in West Germany, and it's modeled on the BBC. So it's supposed to be part of society, but independent from the state and government. It's governed by councils, and on these councils, there's a maximum of a third of the members, um, which are allowed to be close to the government, so either government members or associates. The way it's funded is that each household, there's really no opting out, um, has to pay a monthly fee to guarantee stable and independent funding, which I personally think is a good idea if public broadcasting does what it's supposed to do. 
And that is to provide information, education and entertainment to the public. And especially the information education should facilitate democratic discussions and the formation of opinions independent of political agendas. Now, when I started to help out with that idea of looking for examples where science in the context of gender ideology might be represented in public broadcasting, it was really going down a rabbit hole. And I'll show you um, two examples today, which I think are representative of a few of the tactics used. So the first example is about scientific facts around sex. Um, what you see on the left is a screenshot from a science show in one of the um, public broad or published by one of the public broadcasting agencies, the WDR, um, where the German title roughly translates into boy or girl, why there are more than two sexes. But what's important to note is that the German word Geschlecht or Geschlecht on plural actually has no very precise meaning. It can mean sex in the biological way. And when I refer to biological sex, I mean the definition about developmental pathways leading to the production of either large or small gametes, which are necessary for sexual reproduction. However, Geschlecht in German could also be used to refer to gender. So stereotypes or societal roles assigned to the sexes or gender identity. And the first problem with this example, it's a 45 minute TV show, is that they don't define what they mean with Geschlecht. Do they mean sex? Do they mean gender? Do they mean gender identity? Do they mean a potpourri of all of that? And if they, and that's what they imply, refer to um, Geschlecht as biological sex, then it's important to know straight away, there is no proof for a third gamut in scientific literature. So what do they mean with more than two sexes? To show you a few examples of how this um, TV show got things wrong is I translated German's quotes into English. Um, so there's several um, spots within that video where they claim that early during development embryos are both male and female, or that embryos have both male and female genital precursors and therefore are intersex at day 30. Now, if you look at the actual scientific facts at day 30, embryos have three gonads. These are not yet differentiated. They haven't even started the pathway into male or female development, even though the path that they will go down to is already genetically determined. And then we have, in fact, two duct systems, the Wolfian and the Millerian ducts, which later on develop in either the male or the female genitalia, such as the fallopian tubes, uterus, cervix, or the upper part of the vagina. But the fact is that you can either develop the Wolfian duct, so the male part or the female duct. Um, the development is mutually exclusive. So what we actually have in embryos is that because the gonads are undifferentiated, they're neither male or female, and the duct system, will eventually develop and develop by resolving one and keeping the other. So claiming that this is both male and female is absolutely wrong because we have underdeveloped or not yet differentiated structures. What also is important is that they use the word intersex. Um, now we know that the better term would be differences or variation of sexual development. And if you imagine an embryo, which would be um, really intersex at that stage, it would mean the absence of genital precursors before differentiation or a lack of differentiation of those structures later on, either of which would lead to infertility, meaning a severe medical condition. So this is by normalizing the idea, which is scientifically wrong, that embryos are intersex. The attempt probably was to remove potential stigma from people with DSDs, but actually um, they completely ignore the fact that many DSDs might result in medical conditions which are worthwhile or require treatment. A few other quotes from those 45 minutes. There is a person called Lindy introduced who calls himself or herself a hermaphrodite. And the host then further on explains that Lynn is neither man nor woman. Well, first of all, true hermaphrodites, functional hermaphrodites do not occur in humans. And hermaphrodites are both male and female. They're not neither 
They're actually both, and they certainly do not constitute a third sex. There's another quote uh, I stumbled across, which made me um, uncomfortable, which is humans differentiate children as girls and boys because that's easiest. Well, that might be true, but nat nature strives for diversity implying that nature is better than humans, and they provide two examples. One is turtles and the other is fish. Now, in turtles, sex is in fact determined by external environmental temperature, um, which then drives gene regulation, basically leading to an individual embryo going into a male or female differentiation pathway. So the switch is different, but the process is the same. It's not more diverse than what happens in humans. And of course, um, sex change in fish is A, something which doesn't happen in humans, and B, they change from male to female or vice versa. There is no third sex in fish. Other examples, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, they talk about asexual reproduction, which has nothing to do with sex, as asexual implies. They talk about isogametic species, which have mating types, not sex. They talk about hormone levels, um, which made me laugh because a castrated bull, as you're all aware, is still male. And also claim that brain is a mixed sex organ um, based on transgender individuals and that men can therefore think female, which made me wonder because I was nearly shouting at my TV at that point whether this is the male part of my brain then taking over and making me angry. So overall, um, in this show, what is done is they provide a lot of scientifically accurate details, which are fascinating to watch, but by lacking a clear definition of what they mean with Geschlecht or sex, um, and by basically just throwing bits of complexity to the audience, um, they are more confusing than clarifying anything. Um, and because there's lack of clarity, they imply without demonstrating um, that sex is not binary. So it's confusion rather than um, factual education. The second example, um, which made me furious, I have to say, was um, a series of three pieces um, in Arte, which is a channel um, that is co-produced between France and Germany. Um, and this really, for me, was a clear defamation of gender critical voices as turfs and bigots. So it starts with an introduction, which is entitled Transphobia and Feminism. It was um, aired originally in May this year. And this intro starts with a misquote of J.K. Rowling. So that TV piece is in German. Um, I've back translated the German into English. And really what they said was that J.K. Rowling said, women are people who menstruate. And we all know that this is badly misquoted because we know, she said, there used to be a word for people who menstruate, which is quite a big difference. Then it's claimed that there's a debate within feminism, which implies it's feminism only rather than a discussion we should have in the broader society. And that it's turfs um, who are feminists who want to keep, for example, trans identified males out of female sports, especially in the United States. So a very weird definition. Um, of that slur. The second piece is a discussion between a trans-identified male who is a founder of what he claims to be the first trans-feministic media format with a female host. And this um, trans-identified male claims that the underrepresentation of trans and feminism is due to the lack of uterine menstruation, which he compares to a men's rights activist argumentation. The female host then basically explains that the exclusion of Tims is an attack on those people and that the definition of cis woman by biology is a patriarchal construct because um, the interpretation is that um, the vagina is a female penis and that this interpretation is made by the medical establishment. This is something I've never heard in medicine and never from any medical establishment. So I have no idea where this comes from um, and it closes with the claim that there is a fluent spectrum between vagina and penis because intersex people. In this discussion, there isn't a single critical voice allowed to speak. So it's all presented as facts, um, as if this is the one and only truth. 
And in the second piece, and that's more serious, um, entitled The Not-So-New Transphobia of Some Feminists, um, they start with footage from the London Pride. You're probably all aware of the small lesbian group who tried to get the L uh, out, and they misrepresented their opinion by claiming that they did protest against trans because trans excludes lesbians. They then go on to um, claim that those lesbians call themselves radical feminists and are known as TERFs. They probably are radical feminists, but they um, are known to, as TERFs only because TERFs has been used as a slur. The further on tell the audience that the TERF ideology originated in the UK and is now taking roots in France and Germany. Um, they talk about the so-called trans women rapist myth, which they claim has been created by Janice Raymond in the transsexual empire and that this is fueling TERF activism. Now, a lot of people who might be called TERFs um, I spoke to have never heard from Janice Raymond and have never read The Transsexual Empire. And they close with the, the claim that biology-based definition of women is essentialist and always results in a conclusion that trans women are dangerous without really explaining how they come to this um, conclusion. And I find it really hard to understand how could anybody arrive at that. Now, the problem with this is really, um, first of all, um, they got simple facts wrong. They weren't even able to quote Rowling right. Um, they didn't show the original English version in the background. They got the London Pride event completely wrong. They showed a one-sided narrative allowing trans-identified males to speak, but no radical feminist. So for me, this is classical Davo. They're complete, completely reversing um, the situation as I experience it on social media. And I don't know if it's coincidence or not, I'm not gonna speculate, but this was all aired in early May 21. So relatively short because before the German parliament debated and voted on self ID. The third very brief example is that um, the idea of transgender identities is now also included in children's programs. So this is a very famous one in Germany called Die Maus. It's been airing for, I think, at least 40 years, if not longer, um, where they had two small documentaries in different um, shows. The first on a person called Eric, who was homeless and then got a flat. That's all fine. I have no problem with talking with children about homelessness. But then in the second um, bit, they visit Eric again. Eric is now Katja, a woman who amongst other things likes shoes and clothes. So this is basically, um, first of all, not really discussing what's behind the idea that a man can become a woman. It's presented as a fact, as a simple possibility, and it's associated with clothing choices, which of course is reinforcing sex stereotypes. Now, one question is what can you do with um, such TV shows you can complain but that usually doesn't help much. Um, coming back to the original idea from Rico Humpel, um, if you think about the purpose of um, public broadcasting, which is to inform and educate and to facilitate democratic discussions and the formation of an opinion independent of any agenda, one could question whether those shows really are within the purpose of public broadcasting. So I contributed a very, very little bit. There were other people doing really the main, hay, uh, main stack of work, um, a dossier, which is 50 pages in total. And Rico Humpe contacted various newspapers um, trying to find one which would be willing to publish a statement linked to this dossier. Um, if you read the dossier, um, it's written in German. Please note, I'm not happy with all the phrases. I would have rephrased um, several passages. And I personally would have probably concentrated on fewer and um, stronger examples. But um, at that point, we felt it's better to get something out than to wait another six months because of internal discussions. So um, unfortunately, my animation doesn't work in the screen, but no worries. So what happened is that in um, the journal Die Welt, the um, statement came out 
Um, this triggered a lot of reactions, first of all, from the queer officer of the German government, who's a member of the Green Party, who claimed that everything is homophobic and transphobic and human phobic, which then led, led to internal discussions within the newspaper and the broader company. So the Welt belongs to the Springer company, a very large um, publishing company, where one of the CEOs, Matthias Döpfner, then posted um, a reply basically also claiming that the statement was homophobic and transphobic and maybe it should not have been published. So this triggered um, a lot of debate with some other newspapers commenting on it, um, the left-leaning ones usually just agreeing that everything is queerphobic and clickbaiting and extreme right, whereas the more conservative newspapers tended to really um, discuss either the um, topic per se or what came after within the Springer company. Now, that was a little bit terrifying initially, but a week um, later, when you looked at the um, signature list, we had published um, with Eva Engelken, a Green Party member here in Germany, who's active against trans ideology, where people from the public could download the dossier and if they support it by email, um, give their details to be included on a signature list. Um, I think there was a lot of positive results. So we started with 99 initial signatures from the authors as well as other supporters like myself. And um, three weeks later, there were 1,400 additional signatures. And if you looked into um, or add to later pieces by two of the authors of the initial statement, uh, the politician or, or political science professor Uwe Steinhoff and Andreas Kort, who's actually um, a psychotherapist and, and sexual MD um, focusing on, on children and who's against trans and kids um, without very, very clear um, rare diagnosis. So they were allowed to publish two pages explaining again the motivation behind the statement and what they really meant. And if you then look at the public response on the websites of the um, newspaper, there was a vast majority supporting either of these two authors. Also, and I think this is really important, um, there was one very small online magazine from what I would consider the far left, the Autonomie magazine, so this is really more into um, a socialist communist area, where one of the authors gave an interview to, which is really combining the criticism um, to transgender ideology with um, class analysis and feminist analysis. I think this is a great piece of work. And by this interview, there's maybe a chance to reach an audience which would distrust the larger newspapers to begin with. So as my closing slide, um, I always try to leave people with something slightly more optimistic. Um, so the examples I showed you, the negative examples were from 2021. This year, there were two interesting pieces at, um, which were actual good discussions around the topic. So factual, factual, unemotional, um, the type of discussion I think we need, one only in audio as a podcast and the other in a TV format where they have three people each from either side of the discussion. How can academics pretend that gender identity is real when gender identity goes against science? And I think um, the first thing to realize is that gender identity is something which is prominent as a concept in the you know, parts of humanities and maybe social science, not so much in medicine and certainly not in biological sciences. So, when I came across gender identity as a, as a concept, I did what most scientists would probably do before they even dare to voice an opinion, which is to go to PubMed and check the scientific papers. Now, as long as you haven't found the time, you would probably stay away from discussing it. You know, it's, we, we were really, as a scientist, un, unless I know all the evidence and I've read the studies, I will be very hesitant to voice an opinion. 
Um, so that's probably why a lot of people from the biological sciences are silent on the topic, if they've come across it at all, because it's not prevalent. It's not something which is discussed. It's not something in Germany. It's different than the UK. Um, it doesn't come up. The other thing is, if you go on PubMed and you put in gender identity, you come across um, publications from the medical field. So you assume that it is a medical condition or, you know, official medical terminology. And it takes a little bit of digging to really realize that there is no clear definition. It's not really a kind of biological or medical entity or well-defined entity. So that, again, makes it even more difficult to position yourself um, regarding gender identity. I'm sure a lot of people, if in their classrooms, um, somebody would stand up and say, I think sex is a spectrum. Most people would discuss that based on the science to show that there isn't, unless you use very weird definitions of what biological sex is. But unless you're pushed into that position, you simply don't bring up the topic because you don't know how and why and in which context. Um, so I think that's one aspect. The other thing is, um, in general, also if you consider the scientific publications on the topic, most people do not consider the impacts of gender identity ideology on society and specifically women and girls, because as a scientist, you focus on your subject. And the subject would be the person identifying as trans, not the collateral damage that might come from policies around affirming um, those individuals. 